So this is my first VCO. What's a VCO, you ask? Well, it stands for Voltage Controlled Oscillator. It's pretty much the starting point in any modular Eurorack type of synthesizer. Uh, it's the thing that makes noise. And, well, this is the first in a series of Eurorack modules I've been working on over the past couple of years. Before we continue, I'd like to thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They offer PCB manufacturing and part assembly, of course, but they also offer a number of other services like CNC machining, metal sheet fabrication, 3D printing, and even injection molding. Pretty much anything you need for all your projects. Go to PCBWay.com, upload your project files, and get an instant quote. And thank you to them for sponsoring this video. So even though this channel is based around the idea of acoustic instruments, I've always been into synthesizers. In fact, I've amassed quite a collection of items over the years, mostly small form factor synthesizers like the Korg Volgas or Roland Boutiques and a few others. <laughs> In fact, you'd have seen a lot of them on the synth cover I've been releasing over the past couple of years on the channel. To me, the idea of modular synthesizers is really based around the DIY part of things. So buying pre-made modules really went against that notion in my head, at least. So being used to repairing PCBs and CRTs on my second channel, the 8-bit Manshed, I started researching the topic of modular synthesis. So I ended up with pretty much filling an entire notebook of ideas and notes and designs. Now, some people would call this a pointless exercise, to be fair. Most of these designs are already well documented and available on many, many websites. But starting from scratch was really important to me, so that's what I did. And here it is, after a couple of revisions and errors, I had my first VCO, my first DIY Eurorack module. And it's a pretty much a very standard VCO in every respect. It outputs a square and sawtooth wave. It has a coarse and fine tuning and a trimmer pot to keep them in tune. And it has a CV in, so you can actually connect it to a keyboard. It has a pulse width modulation uh, as a CV or manual control, and it has a frequency uh, modulation as well. Another thing that was important to me is I wanted it to be affordable. So I went for a design that doesn't have any front panels, everything is on the one PCB, and this is the PCB that you put on your case. Um, I'm using SMD components, uh, again, everything is on one side, everything is visible, but that means that it can be very easily and quickly assembled by any PCB manufacturing company. So the VCO is my first module that is ready, but as you can see, I have other modules here. I'm waiting to um, to finalize the designs. So I have a filter uh, that is pretty much ready. I'll probably release that after, after this one. I have a VCA and an envelope generator. I'll probably release those two together if I can uh, if I can the final design in time. I have some buffered multiples. I think these are ready as well, but uh, there's no point releasing them until I have other modules. I have a mixer done uh, as well, pretty much. And after that, I'll move on to things like LFOs and white noise, maybe a sequencer, reverb delays, you know, all this kind of stuff. Maybe standalone kick modules or snare modules. Which brings me to another point, which is that over the past few years on my second channel, the 8-bit Manshed, I have been busy repairing arcade machines and consoles and other electronics. And uh, over the years, I've made repro PCBs of some of the parts that were either broken or simply missing. I've even made repro carts for some of my machines like the MSX or the Mega Drive or the C64. And about three years ago, I opened an Etsy shop uh, where I sell these PCBs for people that are missing them or want extra carts to make their own repros. And this is pretty much what has funded my entire arcade hobby. Uh, it's been entirely funded by this Etsy shop. Without one, I wouldn't have the other. So my goal with all of these, other than make my own custom-made modular synthesizer, is to make them available on the Etsy shop as well. So what I will make available is the PCB with all the surface mount components installed. 
what you will need to source uh, on your side is all the pots, the uh, jack connectors, and the IDC connector to connect that to your, your rack box. So the VCO itself will probably go for $35, uh, and then plus parts, it'll probably cost you $40 altogether, as opposed to, you know, much, much, much more. So yeah, that, that's the idea, just uh, have them available for cheap. Uh, what I'll do as well is I'll include the links to where you can get the parts. I'll try to have links for the US, the UK, Europe as well. I also will include links to AliExpress which is really you know where I get them from so I'm editing this right now and I think we need a soldering guide so yeah not done yet so the first thing I recommend doing uh, here is actually put the IDC connector uh, this is one of those uh, 16 so there's eight pins two rows of eight pins 16 pins um, normally if you have an angled uh, connector essentially this notch here uh, needs to be on top but if you don't have if you have like this a straight one and i actually recommend these straight ones detect less space is to just uh, align them with the notch on top like that just matching here and then just flip them over like that if you have any doubt in those connectors the pin pin one is always the first one to the left of that opening so this is pin one and here i have indicated pin one place this guy here and then we're going to solder that all right, that's that in place. The next step is to fit the five um, jack connectors. So we'll place those five ones, and it's easier to place those first and place the pots uh, afterwards. So that's it soldered in place here. And one thing you want to avoid is these two pins that are you want to avoid uh, these two pins touching on the underneath. So you'll see them very close by here, uh, these, this guy and this guy. So this one here, uh, this one here typically has the signal. This one here is the ground and this is the, uh, I think the ring or the tape, no, the ring, yeah. Uh, this can be used for other purposes that I might describe in another module, but you want to avoid these two from touching. now. If they do on this module, it won't make a difference because this is not connected. But on some modules, this one can be connected. So just make sure that these two really close one here are not touching. All right, next we need to put the uh, pots in. Um, you might want, these are just the uh, solder pads, essentially just to uh, keep the uh, pot onto the board. So it doesn't just rely on the strength of the solder here. So we're gonna fit those in. Uh, they can be sometimes tricky to uh, install. So sometimes you might need to push those two uh, together just to make them fit. And here I have some rather generous solder pads uh, on this side. So we're, what we're gonna do is just uh, press the uh, little legs over so it actually it actually uh, clamps onto the board and then we can uh, solder them directly. So these are not connected, they just provide uh, structural strength. This is my, uh, well, box, test box, modular box. This uh, actually belonged to my great grandmother and I rescued it from, uh, well, from going into the uh, trash back home. Um, but let me uh, show you, I've transformed this into a modular setup of Doom. Um, so here I have set up uh, three VCOs and for the sake of showing you this, I have, uh, I have a little mixer here, which is not quite ready, you can, uh, you can actually just see, you know, it's uh, it's got some clever engineering uh, done to it. So I need to wait for uh, the uh, finalized version. So right now we're just hearing the uh, uh, sawtooth wave from this oscillator. So now I'm selecting the square wave and you notice we don't hear a sound and that's because we need to just said sometimes the uh, pulse width modulation uh, can close off. Uh, it opens or closes off too much. So it goes either to zero or to five and then you don't hear anything because what you hear is the oscillation. Um, I could actually just revise that little circuit, but to be honest, it doesn't bother me personally too much. And also what you really want is control it to receive you, which is here. So next we're gonna bring in the second oscillator. Which is actually <laughs> and as you can see here we get a nice phasing effect 
effect uh, when we slightly detune. Anyway, folks, I'm very excited for a personal reason. This is uh, this is my own synthesizer that I'm designing, and hopefully it will entice a few of you to get into the wonderful realm of modular synthesizers without having to sell a kidney. Folks, thank you for watching. Covers are coming back soon. I've been busy with other stuff lately, uh, but I hope this was interesting. Stay tuned for more of these, and I'll see you soon.